Hello and welcome to the Nancy Cobb Archer Visitor Center and Historic Landmark. I'm Donna. Since it opened, this visitor center has entertained and enlightened more than 200,000 people, such as yourselves, who have come here to achieve a greater understanding of the life of one special American woman. Step this way, won't you? Everybody comfy. Good. Please remain seated at all times during the presentation. Keep your hands on the armrests and your feet flat on the floor in front of you. If you experience dizziness at any time during the presentation, simply look away from the screen. And please, no flash photography during the presentation. It's annoying and a complete waste of film. Okay? Everybody set? How do you do? My name is Dr. Victor Loeb. In this modern supersonic age, it sometimes seems that we have lost our capacity to be amazed. Science has rendered the miraculous commonplace, and we have become smug in our dominion over nature itself. But I am well aware that there are also among you the morbidly curious who have been attracted by the more provocative and, let's not mince words, lurid aspects of this case. Well, you will not be disappointed. For this is, I must warn you, a shocking story. But it is a story that must be told. So now prepare your minds for a new scale of experience. And remember, everything you are about to see is absolutely true. My story begins on a day not so different from any other. I suppose it could have happened any time, to any woman. Looking back now, I realize most of my days were smothered in routine. Safe, predictable routine that felt so much like a life. Well, all that was about to change. Cobb Enterprises? Sylvia? Yes. It's Mrs. Archer. Oh, hi. I'm just calling to confirm dinner with my father. Yes, he has it on his calendar, Mrs. Archer, and I reminded him when he left to meet with the mayor. Good. Can I speak to my husband, please? Uh, he's... I'm afraid he's not in the office. Oh? I believe he mentioned a meeting, a meeting out of the office. Do you know when he'll be back? I don't know, Mrs. Archer. He just said he had a meeting somewhere. Thanks. You're welcome, Mrs. Archer. Bye. Bye. Hello, Nancy. Good morning, Mr. Ingersoll. How are you? Fine. Yourself? Fine, thanks. Good. <laughs> well, what do you think? It's not going to feel the same coming into town, not seeing your shop. Progress, Nancy. Not much one man can do to stop it. But I figure it's best for business. At least that's the way your father explains it. Yes, well, my father's good at explaining things. I don't know what shines brighter, you or that pendant. <laughs> I remember making it for your mother. I'm glad to see you wearing it. She'd be pleased. Thank you. Well, I better get back to the till. Bye, Mr. Ingersoll. Bye, Nancy. I 
think I've got a pretty good handle on most of the things in my life. I, I know there are certain areas where I'm having problems. I admit that, but I'm working on them, and things can change. People change. When I confronted Harry, he said he would stop, that he'd end the affair. Have there been other affairs? This is different. He loves me. He really does. It's not easy being married to the boss's daughter. That's why I have to be patient. Why it's important that I make life easier. Easier for whom? Harry, my father. What about you? What about me? How about making life easier for yourself? I have to go. The hour isn't up. Oh, I'm having dinner with my father. He's on a tight schedule. He's expecting me. Ah! Nancy, do you ever get angry? Everybody gets angry. What do you do when you get angry? What do you do when you get angry? Nancy, what do you do when you get angry? Here, Mrs. Archer. That's his car. Maybe he ran out of gas and he left it. He doesn't care who knows. Let's call it a night. Go home, have some coffee, maybe. I'm not drunk. You don't have to be drunk to drink coffee. It's a free country. Tell him. There is nobody here to tell, honest. Please, just tell him. You're not going to let a little thing like this ruin the whole night, are you? Here comes a point in a relationship when you start to realize what your prospects are. Well, we have plateaued at the motel level of things, Harry. And that is nowhere near good enough for Miss Parker's little girl, honey. You pick this sort of thing way too personal. You bet I do. I have had a long time to figure out women like that. Stupid rich. I have been painting their fingernails and washing their hair since I was... 12 years old. Shit. Honey. Why do you put up with it, Harry? Why do you make me put up with it? Just 
Leave. Walk out. She don't deserve you anyway. I'm not leaving until I can take a big slice of old man Cobb's pie with me. So, community property. Dumper. The old man made me sign a prenuptial. Jesus. All we have to do is find the right angle and we're set. Every day I go into that office, I find out where a couple more skeletons are buried. Just leave it up to Harry. Harry's got a handle on everything. You know what her real problem is? Oh, Nancy, yeah, like you said, she's spoiled and rich. Mm-mm. Her real problem is she actually loves you. Cheese on this dog. You didn't ask for cheese. I don't ask for cheese because I always get cheese on my dog. Is oh. so Mrs. Archer? Yeah. Didn't see Mr. Archer with her. Not unless you hit him in the trunk. Cheese, Charlie. Or a P. No P. I'd like to buy a veil. It's Mrs. Archer. Roll them off, Charlie. trouble, Ms. Archer. It was out there. It touched me. It forced me off the road, and then it touched me with a light. What touched? I want Harry. I want my husband. Did, did somebody try something out there? It was big, and it lit up the sky like a... like a... Like, you've got to believe me. It was there. It... Over the highway. Sure, we, we believe you, Ms. Archer. It's just a, well, Why don't you come on and sit in the squad car and...
tell us all about it. We'll get you a nice big cup of coffee. I don't want any coffee. Why is everyone always trying to pour coffee into me? Woman has to have a limit. She don't got a limit. She is screwed from the get-go. You shouldn't let things like this get to you. It causes wrinkles. It's her. It's not her. It is. It's her. It's her with a gun and an axe and a bottle of acid. Straighten up the bed, will you? Oh, just exactly how stupid do you think people are? Mr. Archer, it's Deputy Spooner. Can I have a word with you, sir? Even Mr. Archer. Deputy? Hi, honey. Charlie? Can I help you with something, Deputy? Oh, yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you heard, we had some commotion out there. Your wife had some trouble on the road. What kind of trouble? Spaceship. Spaceship? Ran her right off the road. At least that's what she said. Sheriff's taking her back out to look around. You, you might want to think about getting home, Mr. Archer. Under the circumstances. Uh, thanks for the advice. No charge. <laughs> Night, honey. Night, Charlie. Goodbye, deputy. Nancy saw a spaceship. You ran her off the road. Is she crazy or something? People who see spaceships, these are not the kind of people who you want making important decisions. Decisions about money. They need help. You're thinking something, aren't you? I'm thinking that maybe I ought to get home to my poor, unstable wife in her time of need. <clears throat> well, that's my girl. <laughs> Here. See? This is where it forced me off the road. I see the skid marks, Ms. Archer. But you don't believe me. Well, look at it from my point of view. All I see are your tracks and nothing else. Well, it, it never touched the ground. Look, you've got to believe me. I... There! What, Sergeant? There, can't you see? Yeah, I can see. Why'd you call him? Part of the job, Ms. Archer. Sheriff? Mr. Cobb? Get in the car, Nancy. I'll drive you home. I was just trying to explain to the sheriff. Get into the car. Thanks for the call, Danby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There won't be any tiresome paperwork about this little incident, will there? I think the young lady's upset enough as it is, sir. Good night, Sheriff. Good night, sir. A spaceship? My God, Nancy, why are you trying to destroy me? I saw it. I cut short a meeting with the mayor to have dinner with you. The mayor, Nancy. Then I get a call from this female deputy. Come get your daughter, your hallucinating daughter. Why can't you admit for one second that there's a chance I might be telling the truth? It's your mother all over again. I saw something. You saw nothing. I will not be made the laughing stock of this town. papers I signed yesterday. Today, there are more. Mm -hmm. Give the girl a break, Hamilton. Harry. Oh. 
All right, Nancy, you look tired. Why don't you toddle off to bed? Yes, Father. Harry. Come on upstairs, baby. Your dad and I have some business to discuss. But... I'll be right up. So how'd your meeting go with the mayor? I'll worry about the mayor. You worry about keeping her in line. And for God's sake, can't you come up with anything more discreet than Tony's Shangri-La? I don't see where what I do is any of your business. I don't care if you cheat on your wife, but I will not permit you to embarrass me. Especially not now, when I'm this close to getting the okay for the zoning switch. What's the price tag for some You're cold. Not that cold. Why did you lie to me? Nancy. You said you weren't going to see her anymore. And that's what I was up there telling her. I had to tell her, didn't I? I had to tell her face to face, didn't I? I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you. What happened? Well, you got so involved in Daddy's business. No, 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 baby. I mean tonight. What happened out in the desert? I don't want to talk about it. I... He'll think I'm crazy. <laughs> Now, why would I think a thing like that? I saw something... in the sky. Anything? No, 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 nothing to report. Hard luck, Eddie. It's hard luck, Eddie. Evening, oh. Eddie. What are you doing out this way, Denby? Just doing my job. Yeah. Well, you ain't got no claim out here. This here's my mountain. You seen anything out here tonight, Eddie? Like what? Like something unusual. <laughs> this here's the desert, girly girl. What you call unusual don't mean much around here. Did you see something or not? I seen plenty. I seen hailstones as big as your head. I seen lightning shoot up the ground up into the clouds. And I heard stuff too. When the wind gets tangled up in them power lines, it makes the water sing like a crazy woman in love. <laughs> Thirty years out here, eh? Ain't nothing unusual to me. Well, thanks a lot, Eddie. 
Yeah, don't mention it, Sheriff. Don't mention what? Uh, what do you figure she saw? Well, it could have been some kid in a hot rod, or a jet, or a helicopter over from the airbase, or... I suppose it could have been something else. Like what? Like a spaceship? Suppose it was a real spaceship she saw. A genuine flying saucer. I saw pictures of one in Life magazine, all laid up like a Ferris wheel. Wouldn't that be something? A real spaceship landing right here. Do you know what that means? I sure do. Overtime. A whole lot of overtime. Who is that? Glasses are new. I like them. Principles of accounting and management, that's new, too. The girl's got a plan for the future. You don't have any future. You can take night courses from now till you stop being pretty, and you still won't have any future. Not with Harry Archer. Well, maybe that's not the way I see it. You don't see anything past the end of that beautiful little nose I paid for. Harry only wants what I want. He doesn't have the imagination to want anything else. He doesn't love you. He hates me. You talked to her like this, didn't you? Chip, chip, chipping away, making her feel smaller and smaller. This is how you talk to your wife, and this is how you talk to your daughter, isn't it? It's one thing to be smart. It's another thing to be smart all the way around the block. You've still got a way to go. Is there anything in particular you want? Yes, I've, uh... Well, I'm anticipating some changes. Once I take care of the mayor and the boys on the council, things are gonna move pretty quickly. So? So? A word to the wise. Don't get in the way. What could I do? <laughs> For you. Nothing. But Harry might try something. He can't stop me, but he can interfere with me. You tell him to keep his head down and his uninspired thoughts to himself. Why don't you tell him yourself? I already have, but you get more of his attention than I do. Anything else? I have an emergency set of tips to do. You take care of him, and there might be a couple of bucks in there for you down the line. Who knows? A word in the owner's ear, you could be promoted to the first chair. <gasps> Maybe I want more than first chair and a couple of lousy bucks. Don't want more than you got coming to you. You'll end up with nothing at all. I suppose it's all over town. What is? Last night's fiasco. What exactly happened last night? Do you like the garden? I try to keep it as nice as my mother did, but it's hard. I don't know how she managed. It's a gift, I suppose. Harry told me you had an experience last night. An experience is a nice generic term, accurate without any messy details. <laughs> I like details. Ask Harry or my father or the sheriff. I'm asking you. If I tell you, you'll just get the face. The face? The poor Nancy face. <laughs> I've had just about as much of that as I can take. Well, I'm a pretty good poker player. Why don't you give it a try? I saw something. In the sky. The spaceship. Yes? Is this how it started with my mother? Nancy, you're not your mother. 
But is this how it started? I mean, seeing things, acting crazy. There's a big difference between acting crazy and being crazy. Do you believe I saw something? Don't say that you believe I believe I saw something. You always call me on it when I try to squirm out of one of your questions. Now it's your turn. Do you believe me? Yes. Thought you'd get away without seeing me? Nancy told you about her little close encounter. Just what do you want me to say, Mr. Archer? That she's insane because she saw a UFO? That she's incompetent? Maybe it runs in the family. Like mother, like daughter. I'm late for a meeting. I can't help but think that under the circumstances, it'd be better if Nancy were to spend a little time, you know, inside someplace. I always thought men like you vanished with the dinosaur and the woolly mammoth, but here you are, big as life. Amazing. Is that a scientific opinion? It's a very unscientific, very female opinion. Excuse me. Why'd you call Dr. Cushing? I thought you might want to talk things out. I was worried about you. You think I'm crazy? Well, you have to admit, that's quite a story you've got there. It's true. Great. You might want to think about getting away. Get some rest. A sanitarium, like my mother. That might be just what you need. What I need is a little proof of what I saw. I just wish I could make you go out there so you could see for yourself. And if I don't see anything? What do you mean? I'll go out there with you to try to find this thing. And if we find it or any part of it, you'll get a public apology from me, your father, the sheriff, everyone. But... But? If we don't find anything, you promise to sign yourself up for a little supervised relaxation. I saw something. I'll drive. Any particular search pattern in mind, or you just want to poke around between here and the Pacific Ocean? Once we're through town, we'll go into the hills. Then we'll take the long way back to the house on the old country road. And if we don't say anything? Then we'll do it all over again. It's Mr. and Mrs. Archer. Figure they patch things up. Getting late. Am I supposed to just go quietly? 
Come on, I'll take you to dinner. You want to stay out here with the scorpions all night? Look, Nancy, I don't know what went wrong, but... What the hell is wrong with that thing? There. I told you. Look at it. I see it. It's real. You didn't believe me. Nobody believed me, but it's real. Jesus Christ, you wanted to see us. Who cares as long as you see it? Until my father hears about this. <laughs> Harry? Shit. Harry? Harry? Help me. Harry, don't leave me. Honey, did your mother call you that? Or was it somebody else? Is it Archer? That's a sweet name. It suits you. <laughs> you must be very sweet to have such a sweet name. You and I should talk. We could have lunch. Do you eat? How'd you get up here? Baggage. Why do I always fall for guys with so much baggage? Come on, let's get you some coffee. Come on. Come on. Let's go. You're paranoid, old man. I think the stress is getting to you. Is that the sort of line you've been feeding her? You're an amateur. I don't know. I've had a pretty good teacher. Get out! <sighs> I'm sorry, doctor. She's resting. Oh? Yes. Good, resting. 
She still doesn't remember what happened to her, does she? No, but it'll come back to her. It will? That's how hysterical amnesia works. It burns off a little at a time like a fog. And then she'll be able to tell us everything. Well, physically, she's all right, but I do want to talk to the emergency room doctor about her blood tests. Is something wrong? I don't think so, but the hormone levels indicate that the tests were run improperly. But she's all right. I mean, you said that. She's not talking about uh, seeing things or anything that would indicate she has any kind of, you know, problems. Like a breakdown. Can you conceive of keeping your mouth shut for five minutes? You don't care about her condition. As long as she can still sign your paper so you can keep the money moving around. Nancy? Dr. Cushing, could you please give me a ride back into town? Go on back upstairs, Nancy. You need your rest. I need to get away from here. Everybody here thinks I'm crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. Of course you're not, baby. If you want to get out of here, that's fine. I'll take you wherever you want to go. I'm not going to let you spirit her away before she can tell us what you try to do to her in the desert. Please. She's going to tell me everything that happened, aren't you, Nancy? I don't remember anything. You see? Don't try to force her to lie for you, Harry. Please, don't fight. Don't worry, Nancy. I can handle him. Like you handled her mother? You really don't know when to shut up, do you? You went through her money like it was yours and ended up making her life so miserable there wasn't anything left for her to do except kill herself. No, stop Stay it. out of Not this. now, Nancy. Shut up! Shut up, shut up! Don't you talk about my mother that way. And don't talk about me that way. I am here. I am in this room. I am, I'm a person. I am not a chair or a... Harry? What is it, baby? Get away from her! You get away from her! Gentlemen? Uh. Dr. Cushing? What's happening to me? Dr. Cushing, I'd like you to meet a colleague, Dr. Victor Loeb. Doctor? I warned you about bringing in anyone from the outside. Nancy's Dr. condition... Cushing, you may be able to see to her mental condition, but you're not qualified to look after her physical well-being. Dr. Loeb is. Come with me, doctor. I'll just wait out here. I'm afraid Harry wasn't very specific when he phoned. Just what is Mrs. Archer's condition? Unique. Don't make any sudden moves. Nancy? I'd like you to meet Dr. Loeb. He's here to help you. Dr. Loeb, I'd like you to meet Nancy Archer. This is impossible. Well, that certainly takes a load off my mind. I thought I had a problem. 24 hours ago, she was a normal-sized woman. Note the hormone levels. The levels are anomalous, but they couldn't account for that. I'm not a that. Of course you're not. Look, I don't care what caused it. I just want someone to fix it. We must get her to a controlled therapeutic environment. I have a private clinic. It's very secluded. That's why Harry... Sanitarium? No, I'm staying here. Mrs. Archer. Nancy. Don't you want the security? I'm staying here! Yes, I think home treatment would be less stressful for everyone. And you don't have to worry about the money. Anything you want, you can have. Just ask my father.
You were supposed to get her into that sanitarium of yours. That's why I called you. Uh, she didn't want to go. You should have talked her into it. Under the circumstances, Harry, any argument with Nancy would be very one-sided. What made her grow like that? You said she began to grow after becoming agitated. Clearly, it's stress-related. The blood levels indicate some kind of hormonal imbalance. Terrific. You've discovered a new kind of PMS. The situation is serious, Harry. You're telling me? The human body wasn't designed to grow that large. I'm concerned about the strain. You mean like on her heart? She could have a heart attack. Harry, try to understand. Right now, your wife has the blood pressure of an adult giraffe. It's all boilerplate, Nancy. You don't have to look at them. How am I supposed to sign these? We don't have to. You use the paint to sign the cardboard. Then I take your signature and I reduce it and put it on the documents. Now, I've spoken to the lawyers about it, and they tell me that under the circumstances, it's essentially legal. What? Blow them up. What? If they can reduce my signature, they can enlarge those contracts. Get a billboard painter or something. I want that fine print six feet tall. Well, I simply will not have the details of my business pasted on the side of a barn for the world to see. Then you better find a new business, because I'm not signing them until I can read them. Uh, well, you've had a long day. I, oh, I'm sure it's been very stressful. Perhaps you ought to, uh... Well, perhaps you ought to go back in the, uh, well, I mean, go back in and rest. I like being out here looking at the stars. Well, of course you do. We all like the stars. They're very pretty. But you have to take care of yourself. You have to... Father, I'm not a little girl. Uh, no. No, you're not. But you need your rest. You have to protect your strength so that the doctors can make you better. You mean make me like I was before? Yes, just as you were before. Now, isn't that what we all want? I'll go back in the stable. Good. In a little while. Uh, <clears throat> that'll be fine. Good night, Father. Good night, Nancy. Jesus, she's big. I mean, big. How'd she get so big? Something that UFO boxed up her hormones. Oh, I can't get over how big she is. The doctors think being that size puts a strain on her heart. She gets dizzy. Probably the altitude. They think she might have a heart attack. I doubt they'd be surprised if she keeled over like a mighty redwood. A little stress, some anger, some aggravation, and timber. <laughs> oh, no. She looks pretty healthy to me. Better than she did on that roof, poor thing. You think we could sell the carcass to Ringling Brothers? Maybe you shouldn't try to be so funny all the time. Come and look at the stars with me. Are you all right? I mean, do you feel okay otherwise? My heart starts beating faster than normal. 
Would you like to feel it? No, 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 that's okay. I'll take your word for it. The doctor said it's all right as long as I don't get too worked up. That's an important thing to remember about not getting too worked up. Otherwise, I feel just fine. Great. Well, I guess I'll turn in. Good night, Nancy. I was wondering about something. Wondering about what? About what would happen if I were to tell the sheriff how you took me out to the desert and simply left me there. What do you think people would make of that? That's not what happened. Suppose that's what I tell them happened. Suppose for once people believe me instead of somebody else. You wouldn't do it. I know you too well. You don't have the nerve. Maybe I've changed. Sure you're all right? Go inside. And don't make any plans for dinner tomorrow night. You and I have a lot to discuss. Oh. Will your father be joining you? He has a meeting with the town council. Tonight's just for Harry and me. Do you want to check the position of the truck, make sure it's where you want it? If it isn't, I'll move it myself later. I suppose you could. The world is my dollhouse, Dr. Cushing. You seem to have made a certain adjustment to your condition. I'm not saying the old Nancy still isn't in me. I can hear her inside rattling around in the dark, bumping into things, always apologizing. But less and less, less and less. Uh, they've all gone, Nancy. Would you mind coming outside for a moment? I'm due for a stretch. Due for a stretch. <laughs> Can I give you a lift? Uh, no, thank you. How can we grow as women if we can't trust each other? <laughs> Doctor, what are you doing? doing. I am merely taking a... So what's in this amazing colossal spike? Oh, just a vitamin soup with a mineral supplement chaser. <laughs> and? Doctor? Vitamins and minerals, as I said. And? And a very mild tranquilizer. Valium or that stuff they use on racehorses? There's no need for this. Well, I disagree. The situation is difficult enough without running the risk of anxiety on her part. I have the husband's authority and the permission of her father. What about my permission? It's really for your own good, Nancy. You're the one who looks like he's having a little anxiety, Dr. Lowe. Maybe you need this more than me. <laughs> Nancy! I don't like needles. Nice try. You ready? Ready. Go. How'd I do? Oh, that's <laughs> good. That's good. <sighs> gun oil. I like the smell of gun oil. Yeah, it's a good smell. My mama hates it. She doesn't think it's a ladylike aroma. Of course, she's pretty much given up trying to make a lady out of me. She thinks law enforcement is unfeminine. Mm. You tell her it's the only job with any future in this stubby old town. Deputy, this stubby old town pays your salary. Oh, 
Oh, no disrespect. It's just a woman doesn't have too many options here, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I suppose I do. Sheriff, have you ever been in love? I'm just curious. About what? About how it is with somebody like Mrs. Archer. Her and Mr. Archer, I mean. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's because none of your business. He isn't very nice to her. Charlie. I just don't understand the way it is with women like that. Don't they know what they're getting into? I mean, can't they see? You know, I figure it's like it is with old hard luck Eddie. That old prospector who's in here every month after he drinks up his government check. He's been going out to that desert for as long as I can remember. Looking for gold, looking for silver, looking for uranium. Punching holes in those mountains till they whistle in a windstorm. And he always comes up empty. What's he doing? Because if he stops looking, he's got to explain to himself what he's been doing the last 30 years. If he quits, he makes himself a fool for trying. But so long as he keeps going, at least he's got hope. Maybe the next claim will pay off, or the one after that. There comes a point when hope's all there is. So you hold on. Long past the point when common sense tells you you should let go. You can get that way with people, too. You keep on giving and giving because they need so much, and then maybe if you give a little more, they'll be satisfied. Maybe. Is that love? No, Charlie. That's not love. That's the thing people call love when they don't want to feel like they've wasted their lives. Welcome home. Like the outfit? It's something. Well, I have dinner waiting on the rooftop garden. California Chardonnay. Not too pricey when you buy in bulk. Cheers. Isn't this romantic? You bet. It's a lovely night. Yeah. A peach. The stars seem so close. Close enough to touch. Close enough to hear you whisper. When was the last time you and I sat down like this and had dinner? We've never sat down like this and had dinner. I mean, in general, you and I as a couple. Lots of times. We don't talk enough, Harry. Talking now. No, I mean really talk. This thing that's happened to me, I think that it could bring us closer together if we give it half a chance. Sure, what do you want to talk about? Harry. Have you ever thought much about Gulliver's Travels? About what? Gulliver's Travels. The book Gulliver's Travels? That's right. I can't say as I have. I have. Quite a bit. I've started to think of myself as Gulliver, suddenly surrounded by all these toys and playthings. And I've begun thinking about the possibilities. Exactly what possibilities are we talking about here? Adventure, Harry. New dimensions, new horizons. Leave the manicurists and the cocktail waitresses down in the foothills, Harry, and look up. 
You don't want to get rid of me. Who said anything about getting rid of anybody? You don't want me in some sanitarium or a zoo. Think about it, Harry. You'd be the envy of every man alive. There are pleasures waiting for you that no one has even dreamed of. Imagine love on the scale of Gulliver. You're thinking about it. I can tell. Are you crazy? You are crazy! What are you suggesting? Jesus, Nancy, this is sick! Sick? Unnatural and sick and freakish. Who precisely are you calling a freak? You! I'm calling you an immense mistake and an enormous pathetic freak! I'm trying to share something with you, Harry. I'm trying to save our marriage. By suggesting that you and I... What did you expect me to do? Get a wetsuit and a flashlight? You son of a bitch! You were sad before. Now you're just a big joke. If you knew half what Honey Parker knows about being a real woman. Insect. Tick. I offer you a landscape and you cling to a glass doorknob. Honey's better in bed than you ever were. She's even better than your cousin Vera. Vera? <laughs> you slept with Vera? Uh -huh. I'll kill her. But first, I'm gonna pop your head like a little Concord grape. Come on, baby. Come on. Man. Little past your curfew, isn't it? Just thought I'd stop by and see how you were doing. I'm doing like I'm usually doing. I got you a little surprise. Such as? Ta-da! Well, look at this now. What happened? You under my fingers, baby You're gonna rise to my touch I'm gonna make you want me We're gonna find out how much Spoonful by spoonful A thimble by cup Yeah, this thing is bigger than both of us It's gonna swallow us up Oh, 
shining bright along the warpath. Through the hills there comes the breath of new morn. Hey, through the sycamores there candlelights are gleaming. On the banks of the warpath, far away. Clarissa, listen to me. Human beings are no better than they ought to be. Uh, hey, it was just an opinion. Carissa! Carissa! You come back here for an instant? I'll... Uh, Carissa, I want to go to you! An animal. An animal. An animal. Huh? Huh? The bank. Oh, wow. Boo pow. <laughs> Not even close. Okay, okay, is everybody all right? Back in the desert, you gotta call me the arm of the year for somebody. Is he on something? You have got to believe me. It's her! She's coming! She's coming! It's Mrs. Archer. I can see that. Where's my husband? Uh-oh. Evening, Miss Archer. It's good to see you up and about. Where's Harry? Well, don't you worry, Miss Archer. We'll find him for you. I know where he is. He's with that woman. Nancy! Nancy, stop! I'll stop when I find Harry. I'm just looking for a little closure, that's all. Nancy, don't do this. I've tried, Dr. Cushing. I've really tried to be all modern and adult and post-feminist. And look what it's gotten me. Well, now I'm taking matters into my own hands. What'll she do if she finds Harry? Ball him up like a used Kleenex. Good. Harry! All right. Everybody get into the squad car. I'm gonna call the National Guard and the State Police. This is not a good situation. Harry? Harry? Yeah, baby. Tell me you love me. You know I do. I know you do, but I want to hear you say it. Tell me you love me. Oh. Harry? Gentlemen. Congratulations. Well done. Excuse me. <clears throat> Certainly. Hamilton Cobb. What? Yes. Well, no, that isn't possible. Mary? Uh, Hamilton, isn't that your little girl?
For a dead woman, she sounds awful healthy. Dead? She's not only alive, she's bigger. What'd you try to do? Kill her with a grow light? Shut up! Can't you do anything right? What are you doing? Hey! Somebody around here's got, I thought they got balls. Don't be stupid your whole damn life. You're better than they are. You're smarter than they are. And you know more than you think. We all do. Miss me? I don't suppose you want to hear my side of this. What are they going to do to them? What do you think they're going to do? Quick, Captain, maybe you can talk to her. What's gonna happen, sir? Nothing. At least not until we get past the city limits. Then what, sir? I don't know, Quimby. I just don't know. Doesn't seem right firing an air-to-ground missile at a woman. Don't think of her as a woman. Think of her as a target. That's what I always do. Hold your fire until I give the signal. You talk to her. Me? You're her father. Talk to her. All right, Nancy. I think you've made your point. I want you to stop embarrassing me in front of all these people. How dare you talk to me that way? It's humiliating. You treat me like such a child. If you behaved like an adult, you'd be treated like an adult. Now, let's keep family matters in the family. We'll talk when we get home. You don't care about me. You never cared about me. You just need my name on some paper so you can hide more money. 
Nancy! That's all you care about? You don't love me. You didn't love my mother. And this town, all you're interested in is how much you can steal from it. You got a gun? Why don't you do something? What, I suppose? Sheriff! Nobody fires until I say fire! Fire! What do you think you're doing? You and I have to talk. About what? About how we're gonna be partners from now on. Equal partners. Get out of the car. <sighs> you know, it's funny the things men will talk about in bed. They'll talk about anything to keep from saying they love you. They'll talk about work and about money. About substandard construction and bribes and kickbacks. When all a girl really wants to hear are those three little words. Now, what do you want? Start the car. Dr. Cushing, what do you think actually happened here tonight? I don't know. I doubt we'll ever know. But I think Nancy finally got Harry all to herself. I believe if we were really going to be honest about this, we'd all admit to being victims of a very unrealistic and limiting idea of manhood. You're right. That's where all the anger, all the hostility comes from. We've been cut off from the old definitions of masculine and feminine, and that causes the basic insecurity that we all feel as men in the modern world. You can see what I'm saying, can't you? Frankly? In my opinion, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not hostile, I'm not insecure, and I don't have any problems with my manhood. Never did. So whatever the trouble is, the one thing I do know for sure is, it's not me. But you can recognize the destructive patterns in your life. And you're ready to change, right? Oh, the destructive patterns. Uh, hey, those destructive patterns can be a real bitch, right? You got, whatever you do, uh, definitely avoid those destructive patterns. I really wish you'd make an effort to participate. 
These sessions are for your own good. I'm participating. Didn't you just hear me now participating? You just don't get it, do you? Why can't you understand? It's not just me that's changed. It's a whole new universe, Harry. And it's up to you to catch up with us. Maybe you'll figure it out. Maybe. I hope so. Otherwise. Otherwise? Try again. Again? Again. Harry, perhaps you'd like to share some of the personal experiences that brought you here. Why don't you mind your own business? You're blocking Harry. Keep your nose out of it too, pal, okay? I think Harry has a lot of shame issues that he needs to work on. I think what Harry needs is a cold beer. That's what Harry needs. Maybe we should do that trust exercise. That'd be a good way to show Harry how we all feel about him. Don't touch me. Don't ever touch me, understand? Harry, I really believe you're putting down that chair would be a good way to start the healing process. Back off! I got him. Let go! <coughs> Intervention is a sign of love, Harry. Yeah? Well, intervene this! 